here's an interesting fact. I, I lost sleep for a week over this. You ready? If you look at the common ancestor between fungus and animals, because the tree of life has ultimately has one tap root, okay? And as it splits, it speciates, and you get all these things. The diversity of life on Earth is is enabled by the fact that life can speciate. Okay. You look at the common ancestor between animals and fungus. The common ancestor between humans and mushrooms split later than the common ancestor than its common ancestor split with green plants. What that means is we and mushrooms are more alike than either we or mushrooms are to green plants. Mm. Well, mushrooms tr- breathe oxygen. All I'm saying is, you c- you grill a portobello mushroom, what's the first word people use to describe it? Vegetarian. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, <you. laughs> no, they talk about mushrooms tasting meaty. Yeah. Yeah, meaty, meaty mushroom. Mm-hmm. No one has, last I checked, no one has ever accused kale of tasting meaty. No. So in a way, we're kind of biting into ourselves. Uh, <laughs> plus, mushrooms, you know, shrooms, you know, they, people have whole relationships with mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and mushrooms are fungus. Fungus thrives on our body. Have you ever done Yeast. psychedelic mushrooms? I've never done anything psychedelic. Can, can, why? Can I tell you why? Yeah, please do. So I don't know if it's a good reason. I, I don't know if it's the the best reason that can exist, but for me, it's a really good reason. The human mind barely works as it is. Barely. You ever see a book of of, of optical illusions? Mm-hmm. No one doesn't love a good book of optical illusions. And you turn the page, oh, what is that? Oh, is it in the page, out of the page? Is the line longer or is it shorter? And you scratch in your head. These are simple line drawings that confound the human mind's ability to interpret. Our brain barely works as an accurate decoder of the natural world around you. You now want to stir in chemicals? I recognize it'll take you on a ride, but I have always valued objective reality. I don't want anything interfering with my understanding of what is actually happening in front of me. And there are people who would claim that under the influence, they're accessing some actual other reality. All I can say is, if in that other reality you can, you know, invent the James Webb Space Telescope, tell me about it. (laughs) If If you can figure out how to fly, you know, and... And if you can do that, tell us about it. And there are people say, oh, I visited Venus uh, when I was a, on a head trip. Did you bring back evidence? Evidence matters. Okay. Did you bring it? No, but it was in their head. Well, the material world, it, what we're talking about is actual physical objects, right? It's the, like if you could the bring physical back world, The physical universe. The physical, yeah. where, what they're experiencing mm-hmm. is something akin to, you could call it a hallucination. You could call it... Uh, a, a, a portal where physical reality doesn't exist and you only exist as consciousness? Here's my skepticism. Uh, I don't mind people saying that they visited another planet mm-hmm. or whatever, wherever they're visiting or some right. astral plane, mm-hmm. okay? I, I don't, uh, okay, uh, I'm, you know, write a travel log and share it with people, as some have done. I guess I would ask whether what you experienced is part of an objective reality that we can all recognize. Because if it's not, then it's completely in your head. And if it's completely in your head, but wait a it's less useful. But what do you mean by that? Part of an objective reality? An objective reality. So here's an example. Um, uh, the, when people have these near-death experiences, okay, mm-hmm. or one where they're dying on a table, and they, they are commonly described, they leave their body. And they look back on themselves. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a thing going. That's something. Okay, right. Let's investigate this. Okay, so the test for whether you really left your body, 
or whether you were hallucinating it, is get some writing that faces the ceiling up above your body, okay? And th they've done this experiment. And if you're floating above your body, above that piece of paper, when you come back to life, you should be able to say what's written on that piece of paper. And that is yet to happen. If you get above it. Yeah, if you get above it, correct. That is yet to happen. That'd be so really good. Where would good. that piece of paper be suspended? Yeah, no, you have to no, put it up on a shelf or something. Yeah, you'd be able to see, put it in a way that it would be clearly. But then the person would have to die knowing that piece of paper was there and then be brought back? Um, possibly. If the, if, yeah, I mean, the. the so you'd have the, to tell them, hey, I, I know you're going to die. You're, you're going to die. We're gonna if you come back, yeah. I have a piece of paper up here. That's Go read like from it. A pretty ridiculous experiment to no, try to if achieve. You care, wait, 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 pause. Pause. Um, from dip, ridiculous experiments. So like, hey, I know this guy's about to die, but instead of concentrating that, on bringing him back to life, let's write down well, on do a both. piece of paper <laughs> you know, and leave it on of, the show. But who the fuck is going to do that? <laughs> no, you know what they did? What? In, in 1895, after Wilhelm Röntgen discovers x-rays and they find out it penetrates your body and you can see bones inside your body, you know what they did? What? They set up x-ray machines at the bedside of dying people. To see if they can see a soul leave the body. Mm. And everybody just got cancer from the radiation. <laughs> they died from cancer? <laughs> no, they were... <laughs> I thought that was an admirable attempt. Yes, to, interesting. To, to make a measurement. Yeah, that's interesting. But, yes. But, but how they, would you never saw... possibly know that someone is going to die and or have a near-death experiment? What, and you then, do every... A near-death experience, rather, and then put a, a piece of paper if you wanted on to, a shelf. You want, what you want to do, you'd have to be really organized about that. Yeah, and, and if you want to do this on mass, you'd have to just like have shelves in have every shelves bedroom, in every in every room, every ER, so, every ER, correct? Or or yeah. How often does that happen where people have uh, above their body experiences? It's very frequently reported. Body. Very frequently. Oh yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that the the brain is capable of so much extraordinary thought within itself. Of course. That uh, what I care about for the world is what is objectively true and what's objectively true can be verified by multiple people and if it's only true within your head it's not useful is all i'm saying how could it not be useful to, to it's other useful people to you oh, yeah. and if useful I, to no, you useful to but people. hold on other if people. it's useful to you and then that usefulness to you actually manifests itself in something that gets created because of this experience like kerry mullis created the PCR method because he had an acid trip and during the acid trip came up with this idea.